All right, guys, welcome back. Testing our ballistics. We got a fun video for you today. We're going to be covering a pistol you guys have seen before briefly in another video. Now, unfortunately, we have uh, uh, misplaced it here. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, we got the 1908 Colt Vest Pocket Hammerless. Now, I apologize for the bad comedy there, but uh, maybe someone will have found that funny about uh, losing if you didn't know i knew where it was the whole time uh, but uh we're gonna be shooting this 1908 vest pocket hammerless this is a really cool really fun pistol i got this one at a gun show this one was made in 1920 now these are not the grips that should be on it uh, the period correct grips should have the black uh hard rubber grips uh, but when i bought it it had these really bad fake black pearl grips on it and they were really thick and they were really ugly and so there just happened to be a table selling grips right next to where I bought this pistol. So I walked over there to see if they had any, and they uh, didn't have the uh, rubber ones, but they did have these wood grips. And I thought, well, this is just a you know fun piece to the collection or whatever. It's not going to matter if we got the exact grips that go on it. Uh, so these are what they put on the later models. But uh, overall, this gun's in real good shape. I don't know if this is the original finish or if it's been re-blued at some point mainly because uh from the factory the triggers and uh safety were case hardened and you can see here you can kind of maybe make out a little case hardening underneath that bluing there so i think this has been re-blued at some point in time uh it was an old blue job they did really good whoever did it you know they didn't wear any of the markings down and it's still a, a high polish blue even though the high polish part is kind of uh, worn down just from years of use but we're gonna go ahead and uh, load up some of this old walmart federal ammo in it you see this tagging barely make out says four dollars and 86 cents i have a couple of boxes of this a guy gave me that i work with he got in a box of assorted ammo so i don't know how old this stuff is this is 50 grain full metal jacket uh 25 acp center fire uh obviously well they only made it in center fire but uh it's, it is a center fire round despite its small size uh this gun has a heel release just like all the early colt semi-automatics uh i will show you how to break this gun down here in a few uh and i will also show you this gun has a not much rifling uh if any it wasn't clean for a long time before i bought it and uh, so it's not overly accurate, especially with these little tiny sights here. Uh, here's your rear sight. And I don't know if you guys can even make out the front sight, but it's that little uh, deal sticking up there. So anyways, let me uh, get this magazine loaded up. It's gonna take me just a second. Now this, I do believe, holds seven plus one, uh, 25 ACP. We're gonna put seven in the magazine, pick it up here. Uh, put my ear protection in, because for a small gun and a small round, this thing is uh, surprisingly loud. Um, I guess because the barrel is just so short. But anyways. Just get this uh, picked up here. You got the beaver tail safety. Just like, again, all early Colts. You've got the, well, I guess the 1903 hammer didn't have a grip safety. But like most early Colts, you've got the uh, beaver tail there. And you've got this little thumb safety so let's see did i already put one in nope sure didn't yeah let's get this thing drawn back this thing's a oh well put the magazine in all the way that would probably solve that issue wouldn't it there we go all right let's put these down range see what we can hit this thing is not overly accurate but Okay, 
There we go. That's all the rounds. This may only hold six rounds. I thought it held seven for some reason, but maybe looks like it only holds six, actually. Six plus one. Uh, anyways, let's show you how to break this thing apart. You can see we've got the uh, rampant colt back here in the back. And, of course, the patent dates and serial number. Uh, let's go ahead and let's break this down. Unlike the 1903, you don't have an arrow up here on the front showing where you where it has to be. But you just want it to be... You pull your slide back till it's just slightly in front of the frame, right about there. I know where it's at because I've taken the support so many times. But then you rotate your barrel, and then your slide just comes right out the front. I mean, it's easy peasy. You've got your striker here. This is, I believe, Colt's first striker fire pistol. And I don't know if this is the first ever striker fire pistol, but I know it's pretty early. Uh, was obviously designed by John Moses Browning. FN made one just like it or very, very similar to it. Uh, in, this was in 1908, this one come out. I think the FN was a 1906. I can't remember off the top of my head. I've got so many years for all these different old guns. I get them mixed up. I think the FN was 1906 and Colt had this one come out in 1908. Uh, there's also the Baby Browning, which has got a few more differences from this pistol. Uh, Here's the one inch barrel. I'll have Garrett show you the lack of rifling in it. It's not much, it's almost smooth bore. Wasn't clean for a long time uh, before I got it. And then this pistol was also uh, replaced by the Colt Jr. And the Colt Jr. wasn't as popular. This pistol was actually pretty popular in the early days of concealed carry uh, with semi automatics. Uh, a lot of uh, famous people in uh, the early 20th century in America carried these. Uh, obviously, there's better concealed carry pistols today with more effective rounds uh, that are not a ton bigger. Of course, you'd be hard pressed to find something as small as this. You can also see you've got another serial number here inside the slide. Uh, and yeah, this one is numbers matching. Uh, this all goes together. But, uh, I mean, that's really all there is to breaking this gun down, to reassemble it. Take your barrel, reinsert it this way, and then you line them grooves up there like that, just like you did when you took it apart. Take your recoil spring, put the uh, rod end into this little hole here in your frame. And then you take your striker, you're going to want to put this back into the slide and you want to make sure to be careful not to drop any of these little parts and this thing will only go into the slide one way you've got this little uh hump here or whatever you want to call that and it slides right into that little channel on your slide so you can't put it in upside down or anything like that uh, i guess you could put it in backwards of course you that you'd be mixing up this for your firing pin and uh yeah, that'd be kind of hard to do. So anyways, once you get that done, now with this gun, this is the tricky part, because this slide, for whatever reason, is really kind of, uh, well, most of the time it's kind of sticky whenever I try to put it on, but there we go. So that went a little easier than normal. So now you just slide it back forward to get your right spot, and you let it go, and you're reassembled. So anyways, let's let Garrett put a few rounds through it, give us his uh, take on this pistol, what he thinks of it, and uh, then we'll have some closing statements, and that'll be the video. All right, guys, we got the Colt 1908 vest pocket here. We've got six rounds of this 25 ACP loaded up. Let's go ahead and shoot it. Now, uh, I do like heel release guns. You know, the older Colts, they've got the heel release. Uh, Makarovs have the heel release. Tons of other guns have a heel release, and I, I, I just like it. It's, uh, it's very European. Oh, there we go.
six rounds goes by pretty quick. Yeah, like I said, guys, uh, you know, I, I, I like the heel release on this gun. The grip safety is a little, is a little, uh, it's not terrible, but it's, you really got to firm up your grip on it, which isn't terrible, but it is a little uncomfortable at times. Thumb safety is nice, very easy to manipulate. Um, back in the day, this is your perfect option for something to carry uh, that's light, very concealable, not noticeable at all, and just probably your best choice back in the day with uh, the Colt 1908 vest pocket. I really enjoy it. 25 ACP is um, not a common round you see right now. There's not many, uh, if any, I believe, new pistols made in that caliber. Um, you've got some cheap guns like the Ravens in 25 ACP, but they're not any good at all, in my opinion. Um, the 1908 Vest Pocket is a very smooth gun, very fun to shoot. Uh, you are limited with your distance on it, especially with uh, not having any rifling as we have seen in this particular example. But no, overall, a very beautiful gun, uh, very smooth. You know, these older guns that are all metal right here, all steel, they just smooth up every year you have them. They just continue to get better and better. And that's what I like about these older production pistols. Uh, we'll let Houston do the closing statements on it. He knows more about the history and things like that on it. But if you come across one for a decent price, I'm not sure what Houston paid for this. I can't remember. Um, you can go ahead and pick one up. I'm sure at your next gun show, uh, gun broker. I'm sure there's tons of examples floating around of them. They were a very common gun back in its uh, heyday. And overall, very fun pistol to shoot. 25 ACP isn't too expensive. Uh, it is a little more hard to find now that there's not very many pistols made in it but go ahead and pick one up and i don't think you would regret it all right guys that's going to be the video on the 1908 vest pocket uh like garrett said these were real popular back in their day i think colt made just over 420,000 of these uh, they made them from 1908 to 1948 so it had a 40 year production run this one was made right in the middle of that uh, 40 year production run in 1920 um so it's, you know, over a century old. So obviously it's got flaws. We wouldn't expect it to be a, a prime condition pistol because I didn't pay a prime condition price for it. I think I paid right around $400 for it. I uh, used to, you could get them for a lot cheaper than that. Obviously the price of everything is on the rise and that uh, includes these old firearms. Uh, no matter how mm, unpractical they may seem by today's standards, uh, the price is still on the rise. Uh, they're still becoming more collectible, and then every year there's fewer and fewer of them out there. But if you ever find one of these for a decent price and you're looking for something fun, a fun uh, a conversation starter or uh, just showpiece, I, and I mean, there are more effective carry guns out there, but something is better than nothing. If this is all you had, say you didn't have any money and you inherited this from your great-grandpa or something, you could still carry it today. People are no more bulletproof today than they were a uh, hundred years ago. Uh, again, there's a lot more practical and a lot more effective guns. Uh, 25 ACP is only effective at point blank range really uh, at most, unless you just get a really good shot. Uh, but this is a really cool pistol, a really great addition to anyone's collection. That's all we've got on the Colt 1908. Uh, to close out, I wanna thank our sponsor, uh, Haskell Gun and Pawn our friend Brandon over there. Uh, I know we've been saying for several videos, he's offered us to use some of his used guns. Uh, we just need to get over there and do it. We uh, get so busy. So we're gonna get over there, see what used guns he's got. Uh, we go in there all the time anyways. We just need to uh, get a day locked down where he can come out and we can uh, bring him out here and show you some of them. Uh, so we appreciate them sponsoring us. If you're in the Haskell area, uh, Tulsa, Muskogee, uh, Wagner, Broken Arrow, uh, all those areas, northeastern Oklahoma in general, you're not too far uh, from here. So check them out if you ever get a chance. Um, but that's really uh, all we've got for you for today's video. We thank you for liking and sharing and subscribing. Uh, we do have a 750 subscriber giveaway coming up. We need to bring the knife out here uh, there, that was given to us uh, generously by one of our subscribers. He gave us three knives. So we've got one for each of us and one to give away. It's a browning uh, pocket knife, folding knife. 
Uh, so make sure to share all of our videos and subscribe and tell your friends and family and uh, everyone else, people, even if you don't like them, tell them to subscribe uh, so you can get entered to win that uh, Browning. I mean, if you're subscribed, you're already entered, but uh, that gets us to 750 subscribers so we can do the giveaway. So uh, that's really all we've got for you. We appreciate your support. Uh, we appreciate all the comments we get. If you have one of these pistols or any early Colts, uh, go ahead and uh, comment to us. We'll try to review all the ones we've got. I've got several. Uh, I know Garrett's uh, got uh, Colt Police Positive coming in. He's excited. Uh, finally, have got him into the uh, older gun department. He's always been more of a newer gun guy, and I've kind of started rubbing off on him, so I'm excited for him to start buying some early Colts. But yeah, that's all we've got for you. We'll... Uh, Catch you on the next time.